Hello everyone, this is Professor Njikun from Unimas. In this video, I am going to go through review the lecture on design for torsion in advanced reinforced concrete design. So first of all, we look at the development of the torsional equations. So for torsional moments produce shear stresses which result in principal stresses inclined at approximately 45 degree to the longitudinal axis of the member. Diagonal cracking occurs when the tensile stresses exit the tensile strength of concrete. The cracks will form a spiral around the member as shown in figure 4.1 below. So with this torsional moment acting like this, okay, then the concrete will crack along these lines here if the stresses or the principal stresses in the concrete exit the tensile strength of the concrete eh? so principal stresses we have principal compression and principal tension so the principal tension will cause cracks along the members like this okay as well as for this side also the concrete will crack eh? along the lines as shown Reinforcement in the form of cross stirrups and longitudinal bars will carry the forces from the increasing torsional moment after cracking. By a truss action with reinforcement as tension members and concrete as compressive strut between stirrups. Failure will eventually occur by reinforcement yielding coupled with crushing of the concrete along line AA as cracks on the other faces open up. So, in the beam here, we need to provide cross stirrups. Eh? So in the beam, we have some shear stirrups like this at certain spacing for resisting torsion eh? as well as longitudinal reinforcement has to be provided in order to resist torsion. Right? So both stirrups and longitudinal reinforcement are provided for resisting torsion in reinforced concrete members eh? and then when the beam fails it will crush along line AA eh? with the cracks opening up along the line as sketch. It is assumed that once the torsional shear stress on a section exits the value to cause cracking Tension reinforcement in the form of cross stirrups must be provided to resist the full torsional moment. The equations for torsional design are developed from a structural model where it is assumed that the concrete beam in torsion behaves in a similar fashion to a thin wall box section. The box is reinforced with longitudinal bars in each corner with closed loop links as transverse tension ties and the concrete providing diagonal compressive struts. It is assumed that the concrete cannot provide any tensile stress. Eurocode 2 gives the principles and some limited design equations for a generalized shape of a hollow box section. In this course, we will develop the equations that can be used for the analysis and design of a typical solid or hollow rectangular box sections. Figure 4.2 below shows that the applied torque TED at the far end of the section produces a shear flow Q around the perimeter of the box section at the near end of the diagram. The shear flow is the product of the shear stress tau and the thickness of the hollow section. Hence, from classical elastic theory, the applied torque can be related to shear flow by the expression torque T is equal to 2 times the area enclosed by the shear flow multiplied by the shear flow, where AK is area enclosed within the center line of the hollow box section or the line of action of the shear flow. So hence, the shear flow is equal to torque over 2 times AK. So from this figure here, we can see that we have a torsion T or TED, okay? acting on the section then we are going to get the resistance in the form of shear flow along the box section like that eh? where the shear flow is termed as q and then the resistance 
of the shear flow is actually provided by the stirrups and also the longitudinal bars at the corners of the box section. Yeah? So in this case, we are talking about the ultimate limit state, so meaning that the concrete has already cracked along the line like this, okay, as what we have seen in the previous figure. So the torsional moment is resisted by the closed links and also the longitudinal bars provided in the section. And then in this figure here, we have the total force along the whole cross section. So Q times UK. UK is the parameter of the box section where the shear flow is acting. So the circumference of the area where the shear flow is acting. Okay. So Q times the circumference will give you the total shear flow along the cross section okay so with that the diagonal force which is the compressive strut in concrete which is the concrete here okay where it forms the compressive strut so this will be the force in the compressive strut q u k over sine theta if the angle here is theta okay where the vertical force is QUK from here, okay, and then the force in the longitudinal steel FS1 is given by QUK over tangent theta from this triangular force diagram there. Now let us look at this figure C here where we only consider the force from one of the phase there. So the force is given by Q times the dimension H where we have the force equals to Q times H. So therefore the force in the diagonal will be QH over sine theta and then the force in the vertical direction is Q times H. And then the horizontal distance here is H cotangent theta S given in this figure there. As Q is the shear force per unit length of the circumference of the box section, the force produced by the shear flow is the product of Q and the circumference UK of the area AK. So, if we have a cross section like this, and then if we have the shear flow flowing through like this, okay, where this is the box section, then the circumference here is taken as U, K, and then the area bound by the line of the shear flow is a k yeah? hence if it is assumed that this force is resisted by the thrust action of the concrete compressive struts acting at an angle theta together with tension in the longitudinal steel from figure 4.2b the force fs1 in the longitudinal tension steel is given by equation 4.2 here where fs1 is equals to q u k cos theta over sine theta which is equals to Q U K over tangent theta, which is equals to T U K over 2 A K tangent theta. The required area of longitudinal tension still to resist torsion AS1 acting at its design strength F Y 1 K over 1.15 is therefore given by S1 F Y 1 K over 1.15 equals to TUK over 2AK tangent theta, which is equals to TUK cotangent theta over 2AK in equation 4.3 here. 
In the above equation, the torque T is the maximum that can be resisted by the longitudinal reinforcement and is therefore equivalent to the design ultimate torsional moment TED. Hence, S1 FY1K over 1.15 is equal to TED UK cotension theta over 2AK given in equation 4.4 here. The required cross-sectional area of torsional links can be determined by considering one phase of the box section as shown in figure 4.2c. If it is assumed that the area of one leg of a link ASW is acting at its design U strength FYK over 1.15, the force in one link is given by ASW FYK over 1.15 is equal to Q times H. However, in most of the design, the links are spaced at the distance S apart and the force in each link is reduced proportionately and is given by SWFYK over 1.15 which is equal to Q times H times S over H cotangent theta. So what it means here is that if our diagonal concrete compressive strut is like this, and then we have a series of links within the compressive strut at spacing of S for each link. And this whole length here is H cotangent theta. Okay, so each link will have to carry only a part of Q times H. Okay, so I'm meaning that the total links will carry the amount of the force Q times H. So it gives Q times S over cotangent theta. So that gives us TED times S over 2AK cotangent theta given in equation 4.5 here. Equations 4.4 and 4.5 can be used to design a section to resist torsion. The calculated amount of reinforcement must be provided in addition to the full bending and shear reinforcement requirements for the ultimate load combinations corresponding to the torsional load case considered. Where longitudinal bending reinforcement is required, the additional torsional steel area may either be provided by increasing the size of the bars or by additional bars. Torsional links must consist of fully anchored closed links spaced longitudinally no more than UK over 8 apart. The longitudinal steel must consist of at least one bar in each corner of the section with other bars distributed around the inner periphery of the links at no more than 350mm centre to centre. Where the reinforcement is known, meaning that you have already designed the sections and then you want to check what is the torsional resistance and at which angle that this torsional resistance is provided, then equations 4.4 and 4.5 can be rearranged for analysis purposes to give TED and theta as follows. So TED is equal to 2AK times ASW over S 0.87 FYK times AS1 over UK 0.87 FY1K which is given in equation 4.6 here and tangent square theta is equal to ASW over S 0.87 FYK over S1 over UK times 0.87 FY1K as given in equation 4.7 there. So these two equations are derived from equations 4.4 and 4.5 eh, by rearranging the terms. The use of all the above equations assumes that the section is replaced by an equivalent hollow box section. So as mentioned just now, if you have a solid cross section, you will assume that it is also a hollow box section. No? Okay. To determine the thickness of the section, an equivalent thickness TEF is used. So now we want to calculate what is the equivalent thickness TEF. Huh? Defined as equal to the total area of the cross section divided by the outer circumference of the section. 
In the case of an actual hollow section, the cross section area would include any inner hollow areas and the calculated thickness should not be taken as greater than the actual wall thickness. In no case should the thickness be taken as less than twice the cover to the longitudinal bars. When analyzing or designing a section, it is also necessary to check that excessive compressive stresses do not occur in the diagonal compressive struts, leading possibly to compressive failure of the concrete. With reference to figure 4.2c and taking the limiting torsional moment for strut compressive failure as TRD max, we have the force in the strut, which is, we have Q times H here, so the force in the compressive strut here is Q times H over sine theta, where the angle here is theta. The area of the strut here is given by the thickness of the cross section multiplied by the width of the strut which is h times cos theta okay so the area of strut is tf times h cos theta so the stress in the strut is given by the force over the area which gives us q over tf sine theta cos theta and this stress should not be more than the concrete characteristic strength FCK over 1.5 where 1.5 is the partial safety factor for concrete in compression. So as Q is equal to TRD max over 2AK then the equations can be rewritten as TRD max over 2AK over TF psi theta cos theta should not be more than FCK over 1.5. Or by rearranging the terms, we have TRD max should not be more than 1.33 FCK TEF AK sin theta cos theta, which can also be expressed as TRD max should not be more than 1.33 FCK TEF AK over cotangent theta plus tangent theta in equation 4.8 here. In Eurocode 2, equation 4.8 is modified by the inclusion of a strength reduction factor V1 or as partial safety factors huh? okay to give TRD max should not be more than 1.33 V1 FCK TEF AK over cotangent theta plus tangent theta in equation 4.9 where V1 is equals to 0 0.6 open bracket 1 minus FCK over 250 cross bracket in using equations 4.6 to 4.9 to design for torsion the designer is free to choose a value of theta which will permit a reduction in link requirements balanced by a corresponding increase in longitudinal steel as for the variable strut inclination method for shear design. However, there are practical limitations on the values of theta that can be used and Eurocode 2 recommends that cotangent theta should be between 1.0 and 2.5 corresponding to the angles of theta of 45 and 22 degree respectively. The approach to design for torsion is therefore A. Based on the calculated ultimate torsional moment TED, check the maximum torsional moment that can be carried by the section TRD max which is governed by compression in the concrete struts as given by equation 4.9 here. And then B. Calculate the torsional reinforcement required from equation 4.5 as given in this equation, whereas W is the area of one leg of a link, meaning that if you have a cross links like this, then SW is the area of the cross section of one leg of the links here. Okay, so meaning that SW is the area of one bar. And then C, calculate the additional longitudinal reinforcement as 1 from equation 4.4 as given. So that's all for the 
lecture in this video. Thank you very much for listening.